Good morning. Saturday, August 7th. Just left one of the uh, less desirable privies that I have used yet on the trail. Kind of dirty, kind of awful. But the good news is, as soon as you step out of it, we're in another spruce forest. So it's like you got your own natural air freshener. So that's fun. Makes things a bit easier to deal with, to be honest. But uh, yesterday, when I was using said privy, I had the literal poo scared out of me because this right here, large tree snapped off at the base over there. Over there. And yeah, just flat out came down. Huge, gigantic crash. I took out a couple little trees with it here. That is a widow maker. And I'm throwing it. I, I'm, I'm very sorry about that. So that's a widow maker, and that's the first one I've actually seen fall or heard fall. No, I did see it. Yeah. I had the door of the privy open because it's not a very big privy. But, uh, yeah, so it's about 8.40, 8.35, 8 8.40 right now. Much later than I figured I'd be getting rolling this morning. But I was picking the brains of a bunch of northbound hikers to see what I kind of have in store for me for the, the rest of the 100-mile wilderness, the next uh, you know, 80 miles or so I've got to go. And, uh... Yeah, they're also the reason I didn't film too much last night. You know, there was about 15, probably closer to 20 folks that were actually here last night, so. But yeah, they're saying uh, I got a bit of a climb today to get up over Mount, uh, uh, something. Mount, I'll figure out the name when I get up there. The next few days have things that are not very easy for me to pronounce. So... But, yeah, I gotta get rolling. Um, the first place to get to is about eight miles. It's Wadley Stream Lean Two. Obviously, I'm doing far more than 8.1 miles a day. Um, there's a Namankata Lake campground. It's in like 11.2. I'm also gonna be going farther than that. Then there's a uh, two more Lean Twos. One's at like 14.5. The other one's at 18.4. Um, Potawajo and uh, gonna pronounce it. I, I just don't know what it is. So, um, you know, gut, I was reading gut hooks this morning when I was uh, taking care of my morning constitutions, and apparently uh, there's like a two two and a half mile stretch between Namankata Lake campsite and the um, Potawajo uh, lean to that's apparently a large root filled hell. So that's gonna be fun. Can't wait. <laughs> but um, either way, got to walk the miles. This uh, Let's do a quick uh, rundown here of the shelter I was at last night. This is the Rainbow Stream lean-to. I slept uh, in here. I did not feel like setting up a tent. Uh, this, uh, I've noticed up here, the two shelters I've stayed at have what's called a baseball bat floor. Um, you know, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's not going to be comfortable. Uh, yeah, they are. They are surprisingly comfortable. Dare I say, even therapeutic. Um, but it's kind of small, you know, it's about six people. Got a little fire ring up front. I guess somebody made a rack to hang up socks on, although I don't know why you'd make a sock rack with duct tape that can melt. And uh, right over fire. Beautiful little stream right out front, though. This is uh, definitely what helped me go to sleep and stay asleep last night. Just a perfect white noise, that little burble and roar of a little fall right there, a little cascade. But uh, I think for the better part of the morning, I'm going to be actually following down here. So um, I'm going to get rolling. I'm going to get my pack on, put my little ditty bag away, and uh, I will check in with you again once there's something to see. Not big roots, but they're still roots. Lots of them. But that's kind of what happens when you have to walk through these uh, spruce and pine forests. They got shallow root systems. So it's just something you gotta deal with. 
Beautiful morning, though. I also figured out why it was so uh, muggy yesterday. Uh, terrible transition, my bad. But yeah, uh, according to somebody who actually had weather on a Garmin inReach, it got up to 86 here yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna let that sink in for a minute. I am in the middle of Maine. Yeah, it's August, but I was not expecting anything in the 80s, to be honest. You know, maybe that's my ignorance of the weather patterns up here showing through, but apparently they only get uh, a couple days a year that approach 90 and or get over 90. And yesterday was one of them. Plus the humidity from the rain the day before. It was just brutal. So it's supposed to be much nicer today. It's only supposed to get into the high 70s, maybe 80 today. So I'm not going to be as drained just by the weather and sweating so much as I was yesterday. So, got that going for me. But yeah, it's just, uh, again, like like always right now, it's going to come down to how my feet feel after about 10 miles. Because um, right now in this terrain, that seems to be about the limit where my feet start screaming at me. Obviously, I need to average far more than 10 miles a day to get where I'm going in eight days because uh, eight days total uh starting yesterday is what i had food for um and i may have to stretch that a bit to be honest um because i've been having big breakfasts to try and get me rolling um just because you know i i, I want to have the energy if i'm feeling good enough if, if you don't have a good breakfast you know it's worse than not having a good dinner so you gotta gotta feed the feed the fire and just do it and so yeah if i get a ration a little bit okay fine whatever i can do that you know there's the uh, folks i'm gonna be running into i know up here they've got a food drop, drop scheduled i may actually see if i can contact shaw's in monson and see if i can get a food drop scheduled for uh four days from now it's expensive from what I hear. Apparently getting a food drop costs about 80 bucks because you got the shuttle fee plus the cost of food plus, you know, gate entry fees if they need any. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to be kind of rolling the dice on that one again, talking to every North Bender I come across when I stop to see what they have to say about these things. Because right now they are my lifeline. They are my news source and everything else. So, because there's no day hikers out here. There just isn't because of literally where we are. We are the 100 mile wilderness. So, it's an adventure for sure. I love it. I mean, it's, it's, this is, you know, everything I thought Maine was gonna be. You know, it's, it's beautiful. The forest is beautiful. There's, you know, tons of critters. Tons of critters. You know, the red squirrels and all kinds of stuff. Birds, uh, you know, birds I've never seen. Of course, we got the little black junco, black and white juncos. I've seen robins around here again. So, there's plenty of birds. I thought I heard a veery. I'm not 100% sure, but I thought I heard a veery the other day. Uh, but this is exciting. It's still 100% exciting for me. I love this. I love every second of being out here. Whether or not my feet are going to give me crap, you know, I'm just learning to deal with that. So, it's not going to put a damper on my attitude out here. Maybe my miles, but not my attitude. Because I'm living the dream, baby. I am living the dream. So, I'm going to keep walking here. I've rambled on for a bit too much. So, when I get up to the, the mountain... I'll bring you back because apparently from the mountain there's a good view and hopefully a bar of 4G. I might be able to get a text message out. That would be awesome because I haven't had any contact with the outside world for three days. It'll be good. I'm still walking along this rainbow stream here. This really is a beautiful trout stream. Absolutely beautiful. 
It's also one of those things though. If I had actually brought a fishing pole with me, I wouldn't be getting any hiking done. I'd be trying to hit every one of these pools trying to catch some native brookies. And I know they're in here. I know they're in here. Well, the trail's actually pretty nice right now, so let's keep going. Got another garter snake this morning. He's just out on these rocks, sunning themselves, enjoying life. Go on. Let's get him out of here so nobody steps on him. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Well, don't you get mad at me. He just went right back under the rock. Oh well. I'll climb down these uh, nicely placed stairs and get going. This is something I hate to see. Somebody went out of their way to kill a snake. I mean, this is a ringneck. This is a, a full-grown adult ringneck snake. You know, might be 14, 15 inches long. There's no reason for that. I mean, they eat bugs and earthworms and stuff. I mean, they're zero threat. You pick them up, they don't even try and bite you. I mean, they're the most docile snake that I know of personally. And if you pick them up, they do try and poop on you. Every time, they will poop on you. Big ones, little ones, you name it. But That's not cool, man. It's not cool. Don't kill a snake if you can help it. I mean, it's there's no reason for it. That's one of the prettiest snakes I can even think of around here. That velvety blue color, and the red head, or a yellow ring around their neck, and orange or yellow bellies. I mean, they're just a, a pretty little snake. Don't kill them. It's, just, it's not necessary. We're we'll back to the rocky, rooty hell. Right, coming up on a, another campsite, I want to say it's called Polywog Stream. Unless I just passed the uh, turn off just back there. I may have, I don't know. I'm zombie hiking at this point. I'm just trying to get my miles in today. See if I can make it. You know, the 18 and a half today. I'm gonna call that a massive win because it'll be my biggest day yet in the in the 100 mile wilderness. But this part is not fun when you have to decide all the time which direction you're gonna place your foot with every step, so you don't step on something weird. <sighs> it just takes patience. Patience and determination. And you know I got both. <laughs> oh, a breeze. Oh, glorious, glorious breeze. Spike over there, I just kicked up. Yep, he's out. I'm the first big game animal I've seen in Maine. A lot of rumor has it there's a couple mooses, nieces, big old brown things that live at uh, Namakata Lake. Not my kind of, I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right. Whatever. The lake I'm going to come to after I get up off of this next mountain. The uh, guys who were at the shelter last night said they saw two moose in there. So, that's cool. Maybe I'll get lucky. <sighs> but I've switched to a fairly different kind of woods. These are primarily beaches and birches and couple really tall white pines in here which is cool so yeah we'll keep moving see if we can't find some more critters okay I'm looking to get past all three of those today Crescent Pond, Nisentabunt Mountain and Wadley Stream. Wadley Stream is that uh, lean-to 
That's the shelter, but I'm going past all three of those today, so. <sighs> Let's get going. Looks like I got a four mile climb ahead of me to get up Nasanta Bunt Mountain, which is where, as I was saying before, there is rumors to have a bar of service for Verizon. And that would be fantastic. So let's go check it out. Looks like we're following along this stream. Beautiful, beautiful stream here. Rocky, clear. That's kind of tannic, but I've noticed that a lot about water up here. It's very tannic, very stained. It looks like tea. But at least the trail here is amazing. Let's see where it takes us. So. First thing you may notice is that I'm still in the woods, right back into the spruce. I've gotten back out of the, the hardwoods. Second you'll probably notice is there's boulders all around me. So climbing up the Mount Nesantabunt, Nesantabunt with an N. Some of this is getting a little hairy. That's where I came from, right down there. And there are part of these rocks and whatnot. Uh, that little gap right there, that's what I gotta climb up for at least the next couple hundred yards. So this is getting fun. There's a a lot of rock scrambles in Maine. And I'm only about 30 miles in. I still got about 80 to go to finish this 100 mile wilderness and get to Monson. <sighs> yeah. That crack, that little gap is what I gotta climb. Okay, it's gonna be fun. Let's go. Some pretty woods here. The trail ain't too bad, right? For now. But I know I'm only about a tenth of a mile away from a spicy little climb. But then again, when you're in Maine, you're always about a tenth of a mile away from a spicy little climb. <laughs> Made it to the first view of the day. That's a good one. Right down here, got Namankata Lake. It's a pretty big lake from the look of things. And in the background there, right there, that's Katahdin. So it's a ways off, but I will see it again someday. Definitely. So I got, I think, 0.6 or 0.7 to the top of the mountain, top of... Nisanta Bunt Mountain here. So this is just a viewpoint that's in a little dip before I get to start climbing again. So it's kind of kind of hairy stretch of trail. Not gonna lie, uh, it's real steep in sections, lots of roots, bunch of rock scrambles, and it's gonna get you know probably about a thousand foot per mile grade here before too long. Um, so far, it's it's been not bad. Like the last uh, half mile since the road crossing, there's a forest road that comes through here. Um, not too bad, but going this way, it's gonna be rough. So let's get up there and see what the view's like at the top. Allow me to give a quick demonstration of Maine that I've experienced so far. Steep steps, bunches of them, all kinds of them. Gigantic rock faces, roots, interspersed with rocks, more climbing, dips, climbs, Flat sections, rather steep drop-offs. This place is an adventure. Oh man, this is a fun section of trail. It's slow going. The last point six up Mountain Santa Bunt here is, you know, up 480 feet, so it's steep. And what makes it worse is that a uh, that average elevation includes flat spots like this. So the sections you're climbing, they are steep. They are super steep. They are rocky, they are rooty. They are fun. 
They are fun. I'm feeling great today. I am feeling great today. There's a breeze up here finally. Got out of the gorges and valleys, away from the ponds. Oh crap. And there's breeze anyway. I said oh crap because I hope I don't have to climb any rock faces like that. But I have a feeling that's on the way. So I'm gonna get this last point three up here out of the way because that's the steepest section and the longest of the steep sections. So we'll get this taken care of. Oh, and I have signal up here. I'm gonna try and FaceTime and mom, dad, and everybody. Well, I got some signal. If not, I'll just make a phone call, but it'll be good to talk to somebody I know for the first time in three days. This place is incredible. Absolutely incredible, even though it's rocky, rooty, uppy and downy. It's a blast. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a loon calling. It's an eerie sound, but it's beautiful. That's the first one I've heard doing that trilling sound. The other ones have done like a... So, but I've seen a few. I guess that one part of a family that owns this particular lake because from what I've gathered they're pretty territorial but they're beautiful birds and they sound pretty cool so just happy so it's such a good day such a good day Shores of Lake Namakanta, or however pronounce it, I'm probably butchering that too. This is the gravel beach. I guess over there is the sand beach where those folks are. But I'm still on my way. Got a, a ways to go. There's a camp that's actually a campsite that's right here on the lake. I mean, with water that absolutely crystal clear. I mean, I'm tempted to stay there just so I can go for a swim tonight. Which, uh, I'm kind of sure I'm going to do that. That would only put my total mileage for the day around 11.5, which is far less than I wanted to do. But, I mean, how often do you get to swim in a freaking glacier lake in Maine? This place is gorgeous. I mean, seriously, look at this. Look at this. I'm going to fight myself for the next time until I get to the camp, and then I'll make my decision. So I really want to go farther to the, the actual lean-to, the shelter for the night. But if i got to camp by the lake, okay. But I'll let you know. Alrighty. Well, I did not stop at the campsite of the lake. It was already occupied by several weekend warriors. I guess they drove in, and uh, yeah, I just didn't want to deal with that. So I am currently still walking. I've got a water source about 300 feet in front of me, so I'm going to grab something there. Then i got 2.2 miles left to get to the uh, Namankata stream lean-to. So that's about 4.30 right now. I can do another 2.2 for the day, 2.1 for the day. Yeah, my feet will let me do that. So that's what I'll do. And I'll, uh, I'll check in with you once I get situated down there. It has been a really good day today. Really good day. I'm sorry, but that's a hilarious name. <laughs> Connects up to the Great Circle Trail, tumble down section. But of course they can't figure out how far away Tumble Down Dick Falls is. Is it 1.0? Or is it 0.6? Who knows? 
Anyway, I just stopped right here in this lovely bend in the stream. We got 1.9 left to go to get to the shelter tonight. Yeah, I stopped moving. Can you tell? My feet are killing me. Um, but I decided to fill up here because this looked like a better source than the last one I popped to. That stream didn't look too great, but this was fantastic and it was colder. So I was filling and I heard something. I was like, you know what? I know what that sound is. And it's close. Not 10 seconds later, Bald Eagle took off, flew up the stream. Day made. So Bald Eagle in Maine. That's cool. But anyway, now I got to get to camp. So I'll catch up with you when I do. Trail up there.